uh, awesome to follow up with such a great presentation there by by Hans and Sepp Shelley from from Slalom. And as we talk about this this transition to post digital e-commerce, how do, how do we get ready for that? How, how do you get ready for that as as a business uh, and prepare yourself for the future? So at the end there, we saw uh, we briefly got to see a, a tech landscape for for an e-commerce company. Um, and and everybody's uh, every company's tech landscape will will differ. It will evolve in different ways, and it'll it'll involve um, slightly different components. But the one thing that we see, regardless of of company size, through our customer base um, and through um, you know e-commerce in general, is is whether you're a, a, a two million dollar e-commerce company just getting started to um, a well-established $100 million plus revenue company, or maybe a, a new direct B2C channel in a, in a Fortune 50 company. What we see in all of these is that the system landscape grows and evolves very quickly. And so do the, and, and that comes out of the processes required to be an e-commerce leader. And, and as we, we just saw that, that focus on customer experience to provide a top-notch customer experience and differentiate yourself uh, and your e-commerce channels, you need to uh, you need to have a good plan behind that because the complexity of your organization will ev evolve quite rapidly. And you might start out with, you know, at the very basics, we have a we have a system of of record at the center, whether it's an ERP or accounting system. And and a single storefront. That's that's really the the basics to get get up and running as an e-commerce business. Very very quickly though, you find yourself adding another marketplace. You will uh, you have to be fulfilling. So you're that that's coming along immediately at the same time. Maybe you're doing in-house fulfillment. Maybe you start out with a 3PL, but you start those processes. Um, you start need to work through those processes and evolve those and look at look at automating those and this complexity grows quite rapidly and as soon as you get a little bit of scale you now open up multiple storefronts and marketplaces you go beyond just say selling in the us or your home country to selling uh, abroad selling multiple and as soon as that happens you're adding additional and multiple fulfillment locations on top of that and with all of this we're adding uh, tremendous complexity uh, there's these inflection points in this business that that shift to multiple storefronts and marketplaces, that uh, multiple fulfillment locations. These bring a, a, a dramatic uh, change internally, and as a business, you need to keep pace with those, uh, and not just keep pace with those, but be in front of those. And that requires uh, a different type of thinking to provide an excellent. Uh, and class leading customer experience throughout that. Because if you don't, uh, and you approach integration as an afterthought here, these things are going, you're, you're gonna be creating problems along the way. And, it, and, and the, the systems only get more complicated as you grow, you're adding in more. And when you look at this, and often as an organization grows like this, you're, you're meeting and addressing need, um, there are such fantastic SaaS applications out there, absolutely amazing to solve very precise problems. But if you just add those individually, you don't get the value and you create silos. And what you don't want is you don't want these systems and these bubbles uh, and the processes and the people with those to be to be isolated or or broken. And as we build this complexity uh, in the business with the growth, uh, this becomes this can become unwieldy, and if you if you look at uh, an architecture like this, uh, a listing of of all the pro the domains, the process areas, and and the types of systems involved, this can be this can be overwhelming. And we often see many businesses they get uh, behind the curve, so to speak, and it literally is overwhelming. It it reduces agility of the business. Uh, it's reflected in a poor customer uh, experience. Uh, and if you approach this correctly, uh, and would, by putting automation first, you can literally transform uh, the whole experience, both within your organization and for your customer, uh, 
and in rapid, uh, dramatically increase uh, efficiency uh, by taking an automation first uh, approach. And what this does essentially transforms what behind the scenes may feel like a lot of data movement, a lot of process complexity, but that's not what you're really looking for as a company. What you're looking to achieve as you go as with this complexity growth is a comprehensive solution. And what that is, is by leveraging automation through, through iPaaS, you can, you can transform a complex tech uh, and e-commerce architecture into one system for your business. And what you can do is produce a single uh, synergistic system for your, your business. And, um, and it's not just applications and data moving here, but a single system throughout the processes and throughout your business. And to do this requires an automation first approach in thinking. Um, and I, I call this a synergistic system. And, and really, what, what is synergy? Well, it's the interaction or cooperation of two or more things to produce a combined effect that's greater than the sum of their separate effects. And that is exactly what you achieve when you uh, take an, an automation first approach. Uh, and you, what you do is you get the value. Single, any of these single systems, individuals, departments, people, are much more value, valuable in a connected uh, environment uh, where data is flowing seamlessly and it gives you this, uh, this single one system uh, feel, regardless of uh, what department or where you're in, pr providing your employees and your teams access to the data and your customers that they need. So if we take a, think about a couple different businesses. Really, I, as, as a leader in a business, uh, regardless of, of what level you're at, you have uh, choices that you're faced every day. But a big one is, is what type of business do you want to be? Um, and by taking, um, if we take an approach where so often automation is an afterthought, um, we see problems in a business, there's pain points, you adopt a, a system, um, because the department might say, hey, this looks, this looks like a great solution. We, we, we used this before. Uh, we see our competitors using it. Let's, let's uh, leverage the system to solve the problem. And it really does in a lot of ways. But if you just drop that system in alone, you're not getting that value. And you're not getting the true value of it because you're, you're potentially solving somewhat of a problem, but you're also usually creating another. You're creating a silo. You're, you're not creating that single system. Um, and that, that sort of automation afterthought, just it, it ends up becoming uh, a drag on, on the business, uh, on the experience of everyone and for the customers. And this, this slows down uh, and decreases the return on investment uh, across the company. Conversely, that, that when you switch to an approach uh, where you, you lead with automation, you, you look at that, you see the value of adding a system or a new process and say, how can we automate that? How does it fit into the whole? And it's a, it's a subtle but very, very important shift in when you do that, it's transformation. It's, um, it really changes the efficiency and a, a business starts evolving in, in ways that really you can't anticipate. You get efficiencies across multiple levels because you're fitting, you're fitting uh, system processes and people and so they fit into the greater whole. And with each addition, you're creating um, more efficiency uh, with that, with that automation-based uh, approach. And what one of the big things this does is when we think of some of those, those effects of, uh, you, you know, accuracy across the board. You think about an e-commerce business and the effect of, of data inaccuracy. You just take, um, you know, huge one is uh, inventory data. We talked about that use case earlier of that shift into multiple sales channels, multiple locations. Uh, if, you're, if you have inaccuracy of that data, a lot of you probably know very painfully, as I do myself, what that can be like 
when customers don't receive their goods on time, you're selling, you're, you're actually conducting sales online, but you don't have the inventory, uh, you've now sold something, or maybe not at the location at the, at, or on the timeline you expect, and now the cost overhead, it, it grows rapidly. Um, the cost of service that customer and, and to keep them happy and keep them successful, whether you're uh, expediting shipments, um, substituting goods, whatever it takes sometimes, uh, let alone just the labor of that. that that's, a, that's a primary example of where you can really get hit um, by, by a different approach. So with that, let's move to, uh, uh, let's move to a poll before we uh, go to the next slide. Okay, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and see the results. So, where, where does everybody want to be uh, in in 12 months? Well, <laughs> fortunately, it looks like the majority here uh, want to move to automation first. That's that's excellent. Good to uh, good good to hear. You're all in the right spot. Um, and with that, we'll we'll jump in. Um, and and you know, certainly what we what we hope to say. This is this is a journey. And it's a process, and really, it's a it's an activity to transform. Um, and it's not just operations or IT or or the e-commerce team. It's a cross. It's a process of transformation. So as we move forward. How do we? Um, we'll talk a, a bit more before we move into a customer panel about how we get ready for that process. So one of the first things you want to do is is develop this vision for your automation first business. Get Get taking your your people and your resources uh, and enabling this automation first culture across all all areas, not just one or two, but this is a this is a, a cultural shift for the organization. It's basically a paradigm shift. So, um, and it's we often focus on we think about automation around the systems, but the foundation for that is processes, uh, and processes are run run by by people and everything in an you're doing with automation really would otherwise be done be done manually but that's the that's the that's the clunky approach so looking through develop this vision for where you want to go where you want to start within your organization and where you want to head to so some of the common challenges and objections we see with this are business process confusion so by this um, if you've ever been in one of those meetings where you get everyone together um, and you're starting to you talk about a process of how something is done in your organization and how it's done currently, not just what not not the way you want it done in the future, but just where you're at right now. And you spend spend an hour or any period of time. It can be hours depending on. And and there's there's five, six, ten different opinions on how it's currently being done. Uh, this is this is one of the the biggest barriers, and we often see this in organizations that that grow and they're rapidly growing processes are changing and evolving and there's a, there's different visions of this internally and this is one of the biggest things that, that you'll need to overcome and but it's very it's it's very very possible and sometimes you just have to take a step back you have to start with a smaller group you have to you have to find a way to get that consensus because if you don't if you aren't able to determine where you are on a given process and where you want to be the automation you you can never automate successfully successfully unless you have that process nailed down. Uh, another area is is so not only on the process alignment but actually alignment on the goals and objectives, how you want to approach things, where you're going, um, with what's most important um, within you know at a department departmental level, well in, in maybe a, a go to market with your your e-commerce channels. What are the things that you're strategizing on? Getting alignment on those are, is going to be really critical. It's going to help clarify and position you better as you move forward with these these automation exercises. Um, and a, a third point here is often high growth companies initiatives are 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 outpacing the business is changing and evolving so rapidly, often because you have fantastic opportunity. We certainly see a lot of companies saw that during during COVID. A lot of new opportunities were created, but to capitalize on them, you had to move very very fast. Um, and a lack of of systems, automation, resources don't have that foundation. If you didn't take automation first approach, often held back, and you can't capitalize on those, or you move forward on those. 
out and maybe you get an increase in revenue and sales, but customer experience is now impacting. You've got uh, fulfillment challenges. Um, you've got any of these issues cropping up that then reduce the, um, the intended profitability of any of these ende endeavors. Um, and one of the one of the ways to that we see to to combat this and that helps an organization become much more fluid in its automation approach uh, and its integration techniques is to move from kind of what we think of as, as legacy approaches, where in some cases it's centralized into IT. Well, that can be fantastic for certain processes that absolutely have to be 100% correct, but it doesn't work. Um, well, to, to move as rapidly as you want to in changing areas of the business. Uh, other, other organizations we see are, are decentralized where the organizations are automating sometimes on their own, integrating in those, the departments, but there's no central coordination. So you have, you have maybe uh, mission critical uh, integrations and automation being done by someone that doesn't have maybe the experience or the, the support and resources necessary. And that's where, um, when you look at your automation approach and how to enable this in the organization, uh, we see organizations most successful when they adopt the federated approach, and that's the combination of that centralized uh, and decentralized. So you have central oversight for the mission critical, but you're empowering depart at a department level to build and automate on their own where it makes sense. And so I almost think that as a center of excellence around uh, uh, automation and integration, uh, and this spreads throughout the organization. What do you need to be successful uh, in, in getting started? So big one is leadership support, making sure that you've got commitment uh, at the top level. And that, it, it, you know, at the level that you need to move forward. Um, while these initiatives, when you think of an automation first initiative, by far the, the best way to move forward is across an organization for it to be uh, a top-down approach for, um, for the, the CEO to, to drive this as a, as a top company initiative, get support from the board, uh, and buy in from the employees. But sometimes that's, that's, not, that's not what you can do. And everybody uh, involved in these processes has an opportunity to be a leader. And sometimes the best way is to grow, is start essentially a grassroots campaign and grow those up and uh, start small. And, and everyone that's involved in, in processes and systems can, can choose uh, an approach to be successful and cause that shift. And uh, whether it's top down or bottom up, uh, they they all can be successful. So getting the leadership support at whatever level you need to move forward is is critical. Um, but lobbying for that, and we see you know this is the foundation of digital transformation is this automation, and it's it's the key to success. So you know whether you need to start small or start big, um, move move forward on that and get the level of support you need. Um, what goes along hand in hand in this is getting organizational com commitment uh, across teams. Uh, when we talk about automation, we're often working between systems. So uh, these might be owned by different departments. They're processes that span multiple departments, very likely. So it's absolutely key to get those synced um, and and coordinated and get get buy-in from them uh, on on working towards this. Because when we think about integration. It's a it's in the end it's a it's a contract between two systems and automation as part of that is a contract um, between different systems processes and people and you need to establish the starting point uh, and and get that alignment and that uh, organizational viewpoint and then when you actually get down to doing hands-on automation it's going to be much much more successful um, and all of this leads together it leads and results in uh, building this automation uh, first culture in an organization. And it can just start where we see it so often to start with one person uh, and it be become absolutely trans transformational. Okay, so one of the things that we're gonna, gonna leave you with in our, uh, our leave behind packet is a, an automation uh, readiness checklist uh, and an assessment. Um, so this will be something that, that as, a, as a business, you can take um, out 
you can you can take and apply to your organization. You can apply it at a, at a departmental level, at a whole organization level. Uh, something you can you can but you can use to essentially as a scorecard to to, to understand where to focus your efforts uh, to to be prepared to begin your uh, your automation initiative and transformation.